that's what the customer wanted. He said it wouldn't look very good. That's what he got. Actually, this morning's job is something a little bit different. I'm going to be plumbing up this summer house for a toilet, kitchen sink, and a basin. So at the minute we've got a cold water blue alkaline pipe running underneath here. It pops out over here, completely in the wrong place, completely the wrong angle as well. If we go inside there, and underneath this rock, we've got ourselves a soil pipe again. Not in the most ideal spot. So yeah, it's going to have to come across up T, air admittance valve, Dago valve, whatever you want to call it. That's going to have to be tried to pull straight, elbow underneath and up into a stop tap. Just having cold water here and then above the sink there's going to be a Triton hand wash unit which you've got to fit. That blue alcohol thing is going to go up that wall, across and then in and T into the back of the toilet with a lever valve on the inside so they can shut it off in summer. All this is going to be insulated as well. I'm going to do the outside in speed fix because it's got a bit of extra frost protection with it. And this is it inside. It's a sink unit here for this Triton T30i hand wash unit probably here. A tap just cold feed. So there's going to be cold feed coming across the back of there and a white like 40 mil waste pipe. I have to apologise, I had to cut that short because customer wanted to come and discuss things through with me. Show you a bit more in a bit. I've got my old man on the job today just to um well, everyone liked seeing him last time he was on an episode, so. <laughs> but no, it's just to try and get this job boxed off in the day um, because the customer's having a, a party at the weekend, so simply haven't got time to come back and forth. I just need to get in it, get it boxed off. Did it go on that bent pan connector? Yeah, just you have to be aware that this cable's four inches off the ground behind the boards. Dad has a look on the inside here. I'm going to concentrate on what I'm going to do on the outside, which is going to be this elbow into that first. So that's in as far as it'll go. That's going to be spun round the piece into another elbow up into a T. Straight through in the, to the toilet. Got a few clips in here, and then because uh, the mechanism to a stub stack, I'm going to put a Dergo valve. It's a black fire admittance valve. This roughly about there because you didn't want a proper vent pipe putting up through here on the top of that. Look horrendous. Plus, there's already one right next to us there. So yeah, let's get this uh, hole measured out where it's going to come off the back of the toilet and get it cored through to the soil pipe first before having to worry about this. Whilst I'm waiting for my dad to uh, measure up that hole, this is the size, it's 20mm alkaline. And this is what fitting I'm going to use, it's a Phil Mac one, so it's straight into 15mm push fit on that end. And obviously 20mm there. There's similar sort of style to a speed fit, it's got no ringing in there. A grab clamp, push that on, and tighten it up with some uh, some grips. Ain't need a new battery. Huh? Ain't need a new battery. No, it's full like that. Oh. We need a new bit. Right, again, while I'm waiting, I'm going to mount this water here as soon as it's just a plasterboard wall, which it is. Plasterboard fixings. We use the bowl fix fixings on this one. As you can see, this box has been in the van for quite some time. So, yeah, just drill a 20mm hole and knock this thing in, point in vertical, like we've got it. So, it's going to look something like that. That's a little fish. This has got to go in back to front, so tail end first. Like that. And you're ready for screwing too? Absolutely solid. 
that's our inlet, so we have to come down with a pipe and drill through this worktop. Oh god, almost through. Fast board, <laughs> wooden frame, Celotex, and then the outside. Fascia. Meanwhile, I've just got a laser level set up. Yeah, a bit, bit over the top I know, but it's hard to get <laughs> measured distance from when, without minusing off the tiles, etc. to the centre. So it's easy just to grab this out the van, throw it up, put my mark down there. I know exactly where I need to be. This just connects on with the, literally a nut and olive. So I'm gonna slide that up there. Just a short piece. I can get my distance off the tile that I need to cut through. distance from soil, from soil tea to elbow has actually landed. Bloody bang on there. Obviously I'm going to bring this closer to the to the outside wall so I can clip distance off. Right, that's that through. I'll either fill that. Apologies, somebody rung me. I'll either fill that or use a talent. Well, I'll fill it anyway, just stop it. If any water gets down, it won't rock the whip top and maybe a talent pipe cover. But I'll leave that off now until I've got the water onto it to test that connection. Underneath here, it's just gonna have a nice isolation valve on there, down into a T to feed the cold for this kitchen sink, which I'm gonna put the tap in for next, if I can find it. Meanwhile, Dad's got this marked up center, straight into the vent pan connector. It's gonna have a piece of white then going through the wall. But that piece of white is gonna have a strap boss onto it to 40 mil to allow for the waste running through. I've done that one. one of these. I think it's going to be that one. There's the base and the tap. That's the toilet seat, so it must be this. Right, tappings now. I just need to think that's the hot. Yeah, that's just going to have a half inch blank on because obviously we've no hot supply in here and if I left that open when you open the cold tap and maybe even move it into the middle so it's mixed, it would start pouring out that flexi underneath so that needs blanking off. A little bit of something like that. So that's that hot done there. Get a little isolation valve onto here next. Something like that. And that's gonna have a piece down, elbow, probably into a T. It's ready for scooting across, but I might drop this low level. So that's us up now. It isn't clip distance off the wall, but we're going to put some packers behind it. So, on the last video when we did a soil stack and put a Dergo valve on, someone said it needed to be, the Dergo valve needed to be higher than the highest outlet, which, which at the time was a kitchen, which was a, a wash and basin, but it's not. It needs to be higher than the lowest spillover level, which in the in this case and that case would have been the toilet pan. If it backed up, it wasn't going to get anywhere near the AAV that would fit because it would have come out over the over the top of the toilet toilet pan because that was the that was lower. If that makes sense. So as long as it's higher than that, that'll make sense and uh, that'll that'll work, should I say? When these are fitted outside, they're supposed to have these polystyrene cover over them to check, protect them from frost, but the customer ain't going to want that, is he, really? One of the major problems with Victoria plumbing stuff is they just don't send half the stuff, so, like, there's no basin waste with the tap. A lot of taps come with basin waste now. There's no brackets for the toilet. All these, all these are going to cost me, which, again, what are they, a fiver? 12 quid foot basin waste. Granted, this job isn't priced anyway, so it's extras for the customer, really. I'm just on day rate, but it's, you think you're getting something cheap, but they're just missing off, missing off stuff. Yeah, so I've put the basin tap in now again. The hot feed's gonna have to have a blank on it. See if I've got a basin waste in the van for that. And um, 
is you've got a square strainer waste, square overflow in the van as well, which probably don't. I mean, even look at the finish on that. That grey bit you can see, you can see where it stops there. You can actually see a mark right the way around the silver shroud. <laughs> Granted, I don't think the customer's paid a lot for these taps, but still. What strain of waste are we going to have? Round. Mint. That's an extra visit to the merchants, and that's just the one without an overflow. However, I can temporarily put that in so we can get the trap height done off that. I've got to have a base of waste in here. What's that one? I think that's one. Could use that potentially. Oh, well, what's in this side, this box? This is Dan's stores. Yeah, that'll do. So basically I've dry fit that now. Got a P-trap off the back of that, so this is going to be our highest point of the 40mm running that way, through the wall. Dad's just now setting up this basin for drilling through. There's going to be a T reduced down to 32mm, straight into, again, P-trap on the basin. Um, I'm not sure whether that one in there will need an automatic air vent on it because if, yeah, if you've emptied this basin, it might pull the trap on that, but we'll find out when we try it. Shop bosses in include, ready there. Toilet can't be fixed down until I've got them got their brackets. It's just, it seems to be one of them jobs where I just can't get, we just can't get going without it in a stop. this tea out of position because obviously we're not be able to get to it once this unit's in the back. Hold on a minute. The 15 mil's not come through yet then. Push the 15 mil through will ya? No. It was. Yeah, it w yeah, it's three. <laughs> that can go wherever, yeah. It's only got the cold feed. Loads left in there. Just need to get that. Uh, Waste tea in next, don't we? Really?
Beautiful. A little bit of a progress update. That in the needs tweaking <laughs> is uh, is done. Cold to the water, yeah. Cold to the tap. Obviously, waste to the sink running across through. Handles have been put on the doors now. We've got a cold feed to the basin, a blank top. P trap and waste connected up that end into reducing T across into the stack. So that's the waste side of things completed. The cold is just going to here at the minute because obviously I need to figure out where I'm going to bring the cold water main up into here. Obviously, I can't do any more with the toilet until I've gone and picked up the brackets. Can't finish the strainer waste in here until I've gone and picked up one with the rectangle overflow. I'm not doing the electrics to that anyway. Flex it off the toilet ready. So in this corner, we're gonna have a stop tap, a T with a drain off on, um, a T to the toilet and then pick up this. Obviously we've got quite a little bit of work to do outside yet. So moving on outside, I've just put some clips on there. Might take them off though, because dad's put them on. I've got black ones. I just think it'd look a bit better. Yeah, that's, uh, that's in and done. Need to now work out how I'm going to get this to inside and then mess around with it up there. Hmm, that looks a little bit better with black ones. Talon don't actually make these black ones, so I believe. They only make the uh, white ones. <laughs> so, I don't know who makes these. But the customer's just told us that he's boxing all this in, so what we're doing with that is that. Straight into film that fitting. Spigot speed fit elbow up into copper into the room. So all this is going to be hidden anyway. Well, not surprisingly really, is it? All right, so I've just picked up the Fisher toilet fixings, pan fixings, and rectangle waste. Obviously I've paid an arm and a leg for my Calpine one because they didn't have the Vivo ones in stock, which is a bit of a pain. Hopefully they'll have the same distance off. Oh no, I'll have to see whether that'll work or not. <laughs> That done first. Perfect that. I don't think there's any sort of height difference anyway. We get this overflow now connected back up. I can move back onto the toilet. Just realised this waste doesn't come with a grate for that. So what am I supposed to tighten? Onto the <sighs> just gets better and better. Nothing in there. I just don't get it. Not sure what I'm going to use now. Might have to put something just across from there to there with a hole in for that bolt just to. Hold the overflowing position once we, well, so we can use it really. If not, it's going to dangle down like that and probably leak out. Can't actually remember where I showed you it was up to in here. So I'll show you what the toilet's not in. I've already marked up on the floor. Don't know if you can see that, where it's going. There and there. But yeah, I've got a lever valve stopped at there. Straight into a drain off, which needs to tighten up. Obviously teed off for the basin and the sink, and this will be a tee off for the Toilet. All right, so that is us toilet back in, fixed down, done. Probably just gonna run a bead of clear around floor pan up toilet and around the basin. It's good to go in here now. What I did with that overflow is just put a weedy board washer on, so it will actually work like that, but obviously it doesn't look uh, very pretty. I'm gonna leave it to the customer to try and um, so it's a new one, then we'll be back to swap it. I'll put that cover on before I go when we've got the water back on. But yeah, for now in here, that's done. Let's move on to outside. Right, so basically there is no water main or cold water feed 
anywhere at the bottom of this house, but there is a toilet there. So we're going to pick up off the toilet coal feed, call through the wall so it can be insulated through, out, down, across, down, into that. Now, because Plum Base didn't have any 15 mil waterproof lagging, I've got the 35 mil waterproof, which slides, not very easy mind, into that nine mil, just normal lagging. So it'll be doubly protected really with quite a thick bit of lagging and and at least it'll be waterproof, what can I say? You can only piss with the cock you got basically with this one. So yeah, that's where we are on the inside, believe it or not. That, this is not the outside wall. There's a cupboard, but you can't get to the back of it. So see what we can do in here now. And just like that. That is as done, it is insulated through there, but it's I've pushed it in too fast when I push that 15 mil speed fit over on. Um, but yeah, this is where they'll shut it off in the winter. As you know, customers always do that. Yeah, so just a risk. So you don't risk bursting any pipes in uh, frosty conditions. But yeah, that's what's done inside here. I'll show you the abortion what is outside. Let's, let's just not talk about that. But, like I said, what else can I do with that? That's what the customer wanted. He said it wouldn't look very good. That's what he got. <sighs> Job done. It has took all day, like. <laughs> and that's how we uh, finished it out here. Because I can't polish a turd, but it is what it is. Anyway, a little bit of something different for you. Hope you've enjoyed this one. As usual, hands locked. <laughs> Don't forget to like and consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll catch you on the next one.